Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I hope all of you are doing well and doing great. My name is Deepak. I have 15 plus years of experience in this field. So uh, let's get started and let's take a look of the agenda for today. So this is a uh, agenda that we have basically for today. Today we will talk about uh, project stakeholder management. Uh, what exactly project st uh, stakeholder management means? The different type of projects that we have stakeholder management overview and its process. So what PSM or project stakeholder management means? Let's talk about it. So project stakeholder management basically includes the process required to identify the people, group or organization that could impact or be impacted by the project to analyze stakeholder expectations and their impact on the project and also to develop appropriate management strategies for effectively engaging stakeholders in project decisions and execution so that basically is the psm or uh, project stakeholder management now moving on let's just uh, you know have a have basically an overview of uh, stakeholder management So uh, this is basically broadly categorized into uh, five different categories. Let's basically talk about what that is exactly. So first is identifying. It means that you have to identify all the stakeholders. Second is ensure, which basically means that ensuring that all team members are involved in stakeholder uh, engagement activities. Third is review, which means reviewing the stakeholder community regularly. Fourth is consulting, which means consulting with stakeholders. Last is capturing, which means capturing the value of effective stakeholder management. Now, under tailoring consideration, it's a three-step process, which is stakeholder diversity, where you're going to have uh, people from different domains so that they can come, they can be boarded, they can bring so much value on the table. Next, basically, is complexity of stakeholder relationships, wherein uh, even though you are going to have people from a different domain, they are going to bring much more value at the same time it's uh, it will help you to resolve the complex problem complex use cases last is communication technology where you are going to use so many different technologies for the effective communication now coming on stakeholder management process so stakeholder management process is divided into uh, four different categories one is identify stakeholder where you are going to identify the different stakeholders that you have second is a plan stakeholder management so in this case you are going to uh, plan the management of your stakeholders uh, third once you have onboarded those uh, stakeholders you have planned the management you have to manage uh, that properly so in in, uh, in such kind of scenarios in certain cases we use different tools different uh, process so so that we can have easy management and the last one basically is the monitoring just to keep an eye uh, that they are following the principle of least privileges uh, people are uh, doing the role that we basically have defined for them. All those kind of things are going to fall into that category. Now, what we're going to do is these steps that we have seen right now, we are going to talk about these steps one by one in detail. So uh, I was talking about the inputs. We basically have three inputs here. First basically is the project charter. So basically project charter uh, is uh, basically helps you to identify the key stakeholder list that we have. Next one that we have is BD, which is business document, which basically contains a business case, a benefits management plan. The next one that we basically have is, which is project management plan. So it basically helps you to have uh, effective communication management, stakeholder management plan. It's going to be included here. Now, we have other three inputs, which is project documents, which is going to contain your change log, issue log, requirement documentation next one we have is agreement so which will have uh, basically the information of the parties which is going to have an agreement among the project stakeholders next is uh, enterprise environment factors which is going to have your government or industry standards ge geographical distribution of facilities and resources your organizational culture political uh, climate governance framework and the last one is organization policies assets which will have your stakeholder register templates instructions and all that information now there are different tools that we use is uh, basically for such kind of uh, scenario for uh, this case is expert judgment where we are going to have uh, the bunch of experts which will help you to build a effective solution data gathering using different sources because your data is a crude oil so in this case what you're going to do is we are going to gather 
the data from various sources and combine into a single data set. Next basically is the data analysis where we are going to analyze the data. Other is data representation with the help of which we are going to represent the data. And last is the meetings so that we have the effective communication. So these are basically uh, the different tools that we basically use. Now coming to the outputs, if we talk about, so in the case of output, uh, we have basically have four outputs. First is basically stakeholder register. Second is the change request. Third is the project management plan updates. And the last one is project documents updates. So these are basically the four major outputs that basically it's going to produce. Let's talk about plan stakeholder management. So basically in this process, we are going to use various approaches just to, uh, you know, have, have effective uh, management plan. So this is basically performed at periodic interval throughout the project life cycle, which eventually helps in developing a realistic plan, which can effectively interact with the stakeholders. So here in this case, also we have six inputs. Let's talk about one by one. First is project charter. So the project charter is going to contain information on the project purpose criteria. Next one, we are going to have basically a project management plan. So in this case, we are going to have a resource management plan, communication management plan, risk management plan. All of the kind of information is going to be available here. Third is going to be project documents where we are going to have basically assumption log, change log, issue log, all that kind of stuff. The other thing we are going to have is agreement. So in this case, working with the procurement contracting group in the organization to ensure contractors and suppliers are effectively managed. Next one that we are going to have is enterprise uh, environmental factors. So here in this case, we are going to have a uh, personal agent policy, stakeholder risk appetites, communication channel, all the kind of information is going to be available here. And in the last case, we are going to have organizational process assets where we are going to have corporate policies, procedures, standards, guidelines, lesson learned, uh, different software tools, all the kind of information is going to be available here. Now, coming to the tools, uh, you know, we have similar kind of tools here in this. We have basically expert judgment, data gathering, data analysis, decision making, data representation, and the meetings. So these are the different tools we are going to be have. Now, coming to the output, we are going to have stakeholder engagement plan. That's going to be the only the uh, one output we are going to have in this case. Now, coming to the other one, which is manage stakeholder engagement. So what that is, let's just talk about it. So in a case of managed stakeholder uh, engagement, if we basically talk about, this is a process where various steps are going to be uh, you know, taken for better communication and uh, you know, uh, for better collaboration with the different stakeholders. So here in this case, along with uh, their concerns and issues are addressed, your appropriate stroke stakeholder involvement uh, are going to be fostered as well, wherein it is going to be performed throughout the project life cycle and basically helps the project manager in increasing support and minimizing the resistance from the stakeholder that's one of the primary benefit and primary advantage of having this now moving on talking about the different inputs that we can have in this case the first is project management plan now in the case of project management plan it basically helps you to have a, a you know, communication management plan risk management plan, change management plan, stakeholder management plan, all these kind of things are basically included here. Next basically is the project documents. So wherein we are going to have the change log, you are going to have the issue log, you are going to have a lesson and register, you are going to have stakeholder. All that information is going to be available here. Coming to the third one, we are going to basically have enterprise environmental factors. So basically uh, we have organization culture, politics, uh, climate, your governance structure, your geographical distribution, all that kind of relevant information is going to be jotted down here. And the last one we have basically have is organizational process assets. So where it contains your corporate policies, your corporate procedures, it basically contain your uh, historical information uh, from previous similar projects. It basically has the standard guidelines. It basically have organization communication requirement all that information is basically available here so in this case you only have the four inputs now coming to our tools you basically have almost similar kind of tools that we have seen uh, a moment ago so wherein we basically have expert judgment uh, you know communication skills like the same one uh, grounded rules meetings like we have seen in the last example 
Now coming to the outputs, we basically have three output in this case. First is basically change request. Second is project management plan updates. And the third is project document updates. Now, next basically the fourth one, which is the last one is monitor stakeholder engagement. So in this case, basically this is a process uh, uh, relationship of project stakeholders. We are monitored and they are going to have various uh, strategies in order to engage the stakeholders using engagement plan and strategies. So this process is basically performed throughout the project life cycle, which helps in maintaining as well as increasing the efficiency and effectiveness of the employed stakeholders. And it also is very crucial to perform while the project evolves. Uh, so this is one of the uh, crucial stage as well, in other words. Coming to the inputs. So in this case, uh, we uh, again have various inputs. So starting with the first one, which is basically your project management plan. So here you are going to have resource management plan, uh, communication management plan, stakeholder management plan. Next one basically is a project document where you're going to have issue log, uh, risk register, stakeholder register, everything. Third one you're going to have is work performance data, which contains data on uh, project status. Next is enterprise environmental uh, factors where you're going to have geographic distribution, communication channel, stakeholder risk thresholds and all the stuff. Last one is your organizational process assets where you are going to have standard guidelines, organiz uh, organizational communication requirements, and all that kind of stuff. Now, coming to the tools, you basically have various tools in this, uh, which is very similar, similar like the last one, which is data analysis, communication tool, decision making, your data representation, ground rules, and meetings. In terms of output here, we have four outputs. First is work performance information. Second is change request. Third is project management plan updates. And the last one is project document updates. So these are the different four types that we have. Now, one thing I want to share with you guys, guys, this is a very uh, huge topic. Uh, like uh, right now we are talking about, you know, the glimpse of it. Generally what happens is uh, we basically go in much more detail about each of the categories, but you know, this is the uh, one of the current limitation here is this is not uh, the course. This is just a webinar where we pick up a topic and dive in more detail. That's why we are picking it up. But uh, I would say one thing that this is something uh, which is basically uh, just to give you a glimpse of it because uh, generally courses are 30 hours. So we cannot complete 30 hours thing in just uh, one hour. So here uh, what we are doing right now is we are just talking the glimpse of it. If you want to dive in more detail, you can just enroll for the course where we are going to dive in more detail, you know, so that we have enough time. Otherwise, if I talk about in general, this is going to be, uh, it's going to take forever. We will not be able to complete one topic. But basically in our course, once you're going to take the course from us, we take care of this. Now, moving on to the structured learning edit Rekha. So if you have planned to take a course from us and uh, you have really that keen interest, you want to take uh, the course. So this is going to be the journey of your course, which is going to look like in the first class, you're going to learn about PMP certification. You will learn basically about exactly the PMP certification is, its components, its different subcomponents. Uh, then uh, after that, uh, you know, we have once you are going to have the hands-on. In the second one, you're going to learn about how to create a high-performing team with the hands-on. In the third class, you will learn about how to start the project with the perspective hands-on. In the fourth class, you will learn about uh, how to do the work, its component, its subcomponents, uh, with practical hands-on. And uh, in the fifth class, you're going to learn about keep the team on track with the practical hands-on. And the last class, you will learn about how to keep the business environment in mind and you're going to become a superhero like that which is going to have a cape on the shoulders just kidding so you are going to become a superhero with the knowledge so i hope that all of you guys have really uh, enjoyed this session and uh, you have learned a lot thank you everyone bye bye